Good morning from the outskirts of Joseph City, Arizona, and the remains of Ella's Frontier, one of the oldest trading posts, or what's left of one of the oldest trading posts on Route 66. We're going to go see a much more lively trading post in a bit, and uh, a few other things along the way, so onwards toward Williams. Jackrabbit Trading Post. I believe it's been open since 1949, welcoming Route 66 travelers with trinkets and moccasins and cold drinks. So we're gonna check it out. I got to admit, you know, the big three: the Blue Whale, Painted Desert Trading Post, and now the Jackrabbit. If you'll remember back, we visited Henry's Rabbit Ranch. And uh, that was the first point where we saw one of the famous uh, signs with the mileage on it. Not one of the originals, but the ones that the owners here at the Jackrabbit do now uh, for, for tourists and collectors. In fact, we have a couple that we're going to be picking up inside. One for our place and one for the in-laws. So it's time. Let's go get it inside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all over that. With the signs and all have to get done here. So yeah. Okay. That's my As long as you don't leave the phone, she actually left. <laughs> Fantastic stop at the Jackrabbit. Great visit with one of the owners. And we got our uh, personalized mileage signs for the house. Back on the road. All right, it's time. We've made it to Winslow, Arizona. So you know what we have to do. We have to go stand on the corner and check out the girl in the flatbed fort. Well, I'm standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. It's such a to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed board, slowing down to take a look at me. All right, well, the Classic Cruisers are running a car show here in downtown Winslow, so we get a chance to check out some classic cars while we're uh, passing through town. It's a great place to check out trains, too. It's a very, very busy track all along Interstate 40 here, and it runs right through Winslow. We are just west of Winslow, Arizona. Let's check out the Meteor City Trading Post. 
the retail history of this location actually goes back 80 years. The first business that opened here was a Texaco station in 1938. The first retail type store actually opened on the site here in 1941. It wasn't until 1979 that the domed building that the Meteor City Trading Post became famous for was constructed. That original dome only lasted until 1990 when it uh, burned down. This current dome that you see here was constructed at that time and Meteor City continued to operate up until 2012 at which time it was closed. Today, the Meteor City Trading Post is owned by Joanne and Michael Brown, and they've done a tremendous amount of work to clean up the site and secure it to protect it from further vandalism, and they have plans of one day reopening this Route 66 icon. After a quick stop at Meteor City, it's time now to check out what it was named for, Meteor Crater. Yeah, most of them are full of water, so this one's the only one on the planet that you can really look at and see that it's a crater. Grove Carl Gilbert conducted the first serious study of Meteor Crater. He was chief geologist of the U.S. Geological Survey. Hurricane force winds threw 175 million tons of material in all directions. That feels good. The shock of impact melted most of the meteor and spread it with a large plume of debris. It took just 10 seconds and Meteor Crater was formed. I do apologize for the wind noise, but that was pretty much all the audio I recorded while we were out here at Meteor Crater. The wind was insane. All right, we've now made it to the Twin Arrows Trading Post. As you can see, it's uh, well protected behind this concrete barrier so you can't really get in there uh, at all with a vehicle and it's probably a pretty good indication they don't really want you in there at all yourself um, so we're just gonna do a nice little drive-by here and check it out I mean you can still see some fairly modern looking uh, gas pumps sitting there at the island in front of the trading post so it's an indication that it wasn't that long ago that this closed down. The uh, building has, of course, been suffered through the graffiti and things. And that right there is an old Valentine Diner. So that's a neat little, uh, you can still see some of the words up there, hamburgers, breakfast, etc. It's, uh, it's a neat little stop. I uh, wish it was in better condition. But, of course, if it was in better condition, it might not be as much of a Route 66 attraction as it is now. I mean, some things that are uh, still in operation, like the Jackrabbit, become icons. And some things that are still in operation just kind of run that don't really get much attention. But that's it from Twin Arrows. Back on the road. States, an old roadbed here wouldn't be much of a... Uh, you know attraction but here uh, in Arizona where especially on this side of uh, Williams the east side of Williams so much of Route 66 has been obliterated by uh, the interstate you know there's not a whole lot of the original roadway left out here so there's a little bit of it it's been ripped up and torn and is behind fence but that's very representative of what we've seen here in Arizona all right, give us some credit. We didn't forget about Winona.
it's easy to see why people would forget about Winona, other than this uh, cool bridge along this uh, now abandoned alignment of Route 66, there's really not a lot here. So really, what is the town of Winona, which isn't much, really owes Bobby Troop a gratitude of thanks uh, for, you know, needing a town that rhymed with Arizona and he happened to find Winona. I can only imagine that he had no idea uh, that when he penned those lyrics in like 1946 that uh, that would literally be the only reason why Nona's still on a map. <laughs> All right, we are maybe about 15, 20 miles outside of Williams, Arizona. The rain is starting to let up a little bit and uh, we decided to take advantage of a break in the weather to drive this old alignment of Route 66. We haven't actually seen a lot of original 66 since entering Arizona. It's been a lot of interstate super slab, so getting some dirt under the tires, even if there is a little bit of rain in the uh, air here, feels good, and I'm sure the truck is enjoying it as well. We are at a spot just outside of Williams, Arizona, known as the Parks Auto Tour. Now, apparently what happened was as Route 66 got realigned multiple times throughout the years, uh, the people of Parks were always able to ensure that the uh, road would not bypass their town. So there was uh, three different alignments of Route 66 that ran through to Parks. So in behind the truck and over along there, you can see the pavement just beyond this gravel pullout, that is a 1941 alignment of Route 66. Now this ghost road down in front of me, which is now a small hiking trail, was actually the 1931 alignment of Route 66. Now we don't have time on this visit to go down to the end, but apparently about three quarters of a mile down here, there's the remains of a old uh, spring house which once provided water to a now long gone forestry service uh, camp that was down here. For me, being a fanatic of old road alignments, this is fantastic. I mean, having the 1941 alignment over there, the 1931 alignment over there, it's made even better by this. This trail here is actually the 19 or is a 1921 alignment so this was an existing roadway that when route 66 was commissioned in uh, 1926 became part of the mother road so standing in this one spot i have a paved 1941 alignment over there I have this uh, road bed here that is the 19, originally 1921, orig uh, so it's original Route 66. And over there, that hiking trail between those trees was a 1941 alignment. And I bet you, if you listen closely, you can probably hear Interstate 40 in behind me, which of course is now the main route through the town of Parks. So thanks for coming along on that little detour. I have to be honest with you, we had never heard of the Parks Auto Tour before. This was a, one of those complete surprises for us. Had no idea this was here. A lot of people would drive by, think nothing of it. You know, what's the big deal? It's a path through the woods. I'm one of those guys that find it fascinating and think about you know, the generations that traveled this road and drove right down the path here behind me. So I think it's really cool. Hope you did too. Well, as you can see, night has fallen here on our 13th day on Route 66. We're in Williams, Arizona. We're just going to kind of wrap up the night here with a little drive around town. We've checked into our room at the Canyon Motel and RV Park, which is a Route 66 original, dates back to 1939. 
has a number of uh, cabin style motel rooms. We stayed there a couple years ago and loved it so much we had to come back when passing through again this year. Williams, of course, is notable for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Many Route 66 travelers will take the opportunity to detour north from here, either by car or by taking the Grand Canyon Railway up to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. We did that a couple years ago, so we're not going to have to do that on this trip. And of course, Williams, Arizona has the distinction of being the final town on Route 66 to be bypassed by the interstate. It was October the 13th, 1984, when the interstate opened and Route 66 officially no longer ran through Williams. So it's great to see the town continue to thrive, no doubt due to its proximity to the Grand Canyon and the tourist trade and for crazy Route 66 roadies like us. Williams is, is a beautiful little town here, you know, very much looks like it did in the 1940s. There's lots of neon to see, and if you get the chance, you have got to eat at Rod's Steakhouse. It might cost you a few bucks, but Rod's is one of the best meals along the Mother Road you will experience. Thanks for coming along with us on day 13, and uh, we'll hit the two-week mark in the next episode. I hope to see you then. Thanks. Thanks.